Okay, I'm um, in the middle of Salisbury Plain. It's early September and I've come here to search for some fairly uncommon um, bumblebees and solitary bees uh, who who are, well, both of which are abundant here. And you can see in the corner of the picture, um, I've come with Stuart Roberts, who I'm going to talk to in a moment. Um, and what I've seen here is an abundance of wild flowers. Uh, so there's just over there, there's knapweeds, and down here, scabias. And of course, these we all know are very, very good for bees. And being mindful of bee decline, I'm always very, very keen to plant the right flowers. But I just want to talk to Stuart about another aspect of bee conservation, which is not so often talked about, and that's, hello Stuart, <laughs> and that's, that's the kind of habitat that they need. So uh, it, it's, basically, it's not all about planting flowers, is it? No, it, it certainly isn't, because um, basically I look at habitat as a series of resources, and although flowers are extremely important, and I don't want to diminish the importance of flowers for bees at all, they're extremely important for both nectar and for pollen, um, but actually one of the neglected uh, features of landscape uh, is, is nesting sites. Mm -hmm. And actually this particular part of the plain is really very, very good because of the activity of um, tracked vehicles and what have you, have created areas of bare ground which are really good for a whole range of ground nesting uh, solitary bees for which this site is uh, particularly well known. Uh, so you, it's not just tussocky grass, you know, I'm always thinking it's really, really good to, to, to conserve areas that have a lot of tussocky grass. So you're saying that the bare ground is actually... Well, the bare ground, it, it depends really what you're trying to work on and this is why an area that's really big like Salisbury Plain is, is an advantage because you can have a mosaic of different grass and managements. And tussocky grass and tall grass is, is good news because you can get tall herbs, which are great for bumblebees, and the bumblebees, particularly the carder bees, they will nest on the surface, mm -hmm. and they like this tall tussocky grassland. But the solitary bees don't like tall grassland because they need the sun to get down onto the ground to warm up their nests. Sun. And so that's why bare ground is, is an often forgotten, uh, vastly underrated resource, and often seen as a sort of insult to people's idea of decent habitat management. Yeah, so you, are you, do you mean bare ground like this? I mean, this really is exactly, these bare areas. Exactly, just like this. This is this has been nesting site for quite a large number of different species of uh, lazy glossum. And also I've had rare andrinas like Andrina similima nesting here and uh, bees like Melitta uh, leeperina. I've seen but these are all solitary bees, are They're they? They're all solitary yeah. bees, yes yeah. they are indeed. So, so can you very, very quickly just whiz through the life cycle of a, a solitary bee, the, the kind that would live in the ground like this? Yes, well, then there are two main um, uh, life cycles. The, the, the lazy glossums are rather like um, bumblebees in the fact that they both uh, they um, mated females over winter and they establish a nest in the spring and then they uh, rear a new generation the following year in the, uh, in the summer and the males are produced at the end of the year. They mate with a new females which then go and hibernate. Mm -hmm. um, the other solitary bees, the andrinas, uh, what they're going to be doing is they're going to dig uh, and they're going to emerge in their flight season, whatever that may be. So with andrina similima that will be in um, early August, uh, late July. Uh, they're going to provision that the, the males and females will mate. Uh, the males will then die, their um, purpose served. And the females will then excavate a burrow and provision it with pollen and then they will lay their eggs in various brood cells, maybe about mm -hmm. 10, 15, maybe 20, and then they will die. And the entire future of that particular species is then left invested in the developing grub underground, okay. which will overwinter as a, in the summer emerging species, they will overwinter as a fully grown larva. Okay. So they're basically, what you're saying is they're absolutely reliant, um, many of our um, ground nesting solitary bees on bare patches like this, the sort of bare patch that most of us would, would rush out and plant flowers in. Exactly so. Uh, they, they really are uh, dependent on it and, yeah. and it's, it's many solitary bees, some solitary bees will nest very close together to form basically what is a bee city. Okay. Others will nest in a more scattered way and the nests are very difficult to find but they like areas where the sun can get right down onto the ground, so either a very short turf yeah. or bare ground. So how, how can we translate this? I mean, we're on Salisbury Plain now, there's all sorts of, as you say, this is a mosaic habitat, it's amazing. How can we translate this to, to our back gardens? 
Well, it's a good question, and uh, and it's one that I think that you know sort of flies in the face of some of the things we we hear today about this sort of complete um, uh, trend for planting up and letting lawns grow longer and longer. I would certainly advocate that we don't allow all our lawns to grow uh, mm. up and flower, but keep some of it cut really low. Uh, and al allows the sun to get down to the soil surface. If you've got a bank of any sort that is facing south, mm -hmm. um, uh, keep it, uh, bits of it at least, strimmed and let the, let the soil get in direct contact with sunlight and, and, and warmth and you will get bees nesting on it. Okay, and one very last quick question I, th I think anyone who watches this may want to ask is, um, isn't the mowing and the strimming going to um, destroy the nests? Uh, no, because the nests are going to be underground, uh, and what it will do, it, you, there's no real reason why you need to mow it and strim it, uh, you're going to be damaging it when it's nesting. But even if you have a nesting aggregation with, bare, um, with some sparsely vegetated ground, if you take the grass off, it's not going to stop them nesting, okay. because they're going to be in the soil rather than in the vegetation itself. Brilliant. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. So, so that, this is Stuart Roberts, who is uh, your chairman of the Bees, Wasps and Ants recording society. At yeah. the moment, yes. At the moment, <laughs> until next year. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, hopefully we're going to go and find some more exciting bees now. So um, on Salisbury Plain, which is incredible. There we go.